Hi, it's Kyle from Bytewing Games, and today we're taking a look at Santorini. Santorini is a game for two players that plays in about 20 minutes. Technically, Santorini can play two to four players, but the rulebook even says Santorini is best as a two-player game. I've played it with three players, and they're right. Santorini is best as a two-player game. If you're playing with three or four players, I would find another game to play. Santorini is a strategy game with no luck involved. Think along the lines of chess. But hold on, if you don't like chess, that doesn't mean you won't like Santorini. It just means that there's no rolling of the dice. There's no flipping of cards that will randomly give you something. You have perfect knowledge of everything going on. The only thing you don't know is what your opponent's going to do. So your job is to outmaneuver them. The gameplay is fairly simple. You'll begin the game with two workers on the board. On your turn, you will move and then you will build. To move, you'll choose one worker and move them one space in any direction, including diagonally. If there are buildings already built, you can move your worker up or down one space as well. You will then build in any of the eight surrounding spaces that are unoccupied by another worker. To build, you just lay the next tier of a building. For example, if your worker moved to this space, you could build the ground layer in any of these five spaces. You could build a second level of the tower here, the third layer of the tower here, or place a dome on the building here. The first player to move one of their workers to the top of a level 3 building wins the game. That's all there is to it. Outmaneuver and block your opponent in such a way that you can get your person on top of this level 3 building first. So is Santorini fun? First of all, look at this game. It's a lot of fun to build these towers and move your people around. Second, I love the simplicity of the game. You move and you build. That's all that you really have to do. I love how quick the game is. I can usually play in anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. Typically when I have the game out, I'll play it twice because all the pieces are out, it's an enjoyable enough game, and it's already out, so I might as well just play it twice. To me, that's a Sign of a good game if I'm willing to play it twice while I have it out. Once you've mastered the basics of the game, you can introduce god powers. For the god powers, one player will pick two cards from the deck. They will then let the other player choose which to take, and they will be left over with the remaining card. I love this aspect of the game. It's not randomly draw two and, and hope that they're well matched together. One player gets to select both cards that will be in play but they can't pick one that's better than the other because then one player will pick the card that is the best card compared to the other card. And so they have to pick cards that they think are pretty evenly matched because they're gonna be the one with the leftover choice. So I absolutely love that method of choosing the god powers. Overall, I just love the god powers because it adds a lot of variability to the game and makes it so the, the game that's a fairly simple standard game has some unique player powers. On to the negatives, and I have a hard time putting this into words, but games like chess and Santorini that are the pure strategy, no luck games are difficult for people of different skill levels. If one player knows certain moves that's going to help them to win and the other player doesn't, then they're at a severe disadvantage and they're going to lose every single time. It's almost like a formula. If you know a piece of the formula and I don't, you have the advantage until I learn that. And it's something that you can learn, but I almost don't want to because then it, it stops me from being able to play with someone brand new to the game. I can only play with others who have played the game before because we both know this formula. While I never mind playing the game, I never end the game and feel extremely satisfied. When the game ends, I typically am like, oh, looks like you won the game. Cool. Or oh, looks like I won the game, cool. I can never really plan ahead enough because I don't feel like I know that strategy. And I know I could go online, I could really analyze and think about the game and try to get a lot better. But for me, I just don't know if it's worth it. There's a lot of other games that I can play and enjoy with players of different experience levels. And this game, I, I set myself apart from others if I learn all of the different methods to win. Overall, I give Santorini two and a half out of five stars on my fun scale. I never mind playing the game, but I also never really go out of my way to play it 
because I never feel clever or satisfied as I play. Maybe I have one or two good, smart moves, but typically I'm just kind of feel like I'm randomly moving pieces around. Like I said, I know I could learn the strategy, but I don't want to put myself off of being able to play with new players if I have this formula memorized of, of how to win the game. I still do highly recommend the game. I think a lot of people like it, and there's a lot of good reasons why they should like it. But for me, for how simple the game is, move and build, it's not enough for me to fully invest in when there's other games that I can play that I feel like do make me feel more satisfied. I would love to hear what your thoughts are on Santorini if you've played it before. Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Until next time.